So if you haven't yet seen the debate on whether anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism, uh, the monk debate, which you can find on their website between Douglas Murray and Mehdi Hassan, alongside them was Natasha Hausdorff and Gideon Levy. Um, you need to watch it because Douglas and Natasha make some really important points. It's a really important debate. But one thing that hasn't been picked up so much that I felt we need to pick up was Mehdi Hassan trying to claim that Gazan civilians weren't involved in the Hamas October 7th attack, which is an astonishing lie. And I just want to, sh to show you this clip so we call him out on this. It's just unbelievable. The proposition tonight have sprayed around the word lie and liar. So let's return the compliment. Natasha lied when she talked about UNRWA and terrorism. The UN set up an independent inquiry, asked the Israelis for evidence. I know you don't want to hear this. The Israelis, the, they asked the Israelis, she's parroting propaganda from the Israeli government. The Israeli government was asked to give evidence. They refused to give their evidence. Every Western government, including your own, Canada's, has restarted funding because they looked at the evidence and didn't see it. That's great. I get it, I get it, I get it. But, but as Douglas might have once said, facts don't care about your feelings. I'm going to ask to respond to that because it's clear Mehdi didn't ask, listen to a single word that I said. I was talking about UN statistics that show that out of the 3,000 terrorists that crossed the border on the 7th of October, three quarters of them would have been educated in the UNRWA school system. I didn't even start to talk about the complicity of UNRWA in the terrorist atrocities themselves, and that has been well documented. <laughs> but on the education point, on the education Canadian point, I commend the work of Impact SE that has looked at Palestinian Authority textbooks. I commend the work of UN Watch that is out the UNRWA um, chats on Telegram in which the attacks were both supported and celebrated and the identities of those UNRWA employees that took part in them. There are NGOs doing important work to, care, to clear the, uh, the realities of what it is that the opposition seem to be blind to, but that also includes this absolutely abhorrent allegation of war crimes. It's another blood libel. So it was occupation, by the way, but we can come on to that, I'm sure, a little bit later. So it's completely astonishing to see Mehdi just lie about the fact that UNRWA and other civilians were involved. And I saw him later in the in the interview, I think, basically dismissing this idea of civilians being involved in the October 7th attack. Let's just have a look at some bits of evidence that we have for this. OK, it's, it's just absurd that I even need to show this. Um, we see survivors of Hamas massacre suing UNRWA, saying that an UNRWA teacher held uh, me hostage, is what uh, the survivor said. We also have the Israeli military calling for investigations after releasing videos showing armed men at UN facilities in Gaza. And as Natasha also pointed out, um, she said very clearly that so many of the terrorists were educated in UNRWA schools. Um, here, another one. I captured one. IDF recordings show more UNRWA staffers bragging of October 7th crimes. The IDF on Monday released audio recordings that it says incriminate two additional UNRWA employees who allegedly participated in the Hamas-led October 7th onslaught, bringing the total number of agency workers that Jerusalem has actively participated in the attacks to 14. Um, I'm inside, I'm inside with the Jews, Mahmoud Al-Khali, an Islamic Jihad terrorist whom the IDF says was employed as a teacher in an UNRWA school, is heard saying in one recording. How will you get home, he asks in a phone call, and he replies with a laugh, when I die. In another recording, an UNRWA teacher can purportedly be heard bragging about kidnapping Israeli soldiers. We have female hostages, I captured one, says Yusuf al Hawa Jara, a Hamas terrorist who works as a teacher at an UNRWA school in Deir al-Bala, according to the IDF. Everything's fine, I hope, he later says in the recording. We will enter Alaska Mosque. He says that he entered Israel and saw the sights. They shot them in the eyes. They did actions for liberations, God willing. Asked what he found while in Israel, he says 1,000 shekels. IDF spokesman Rear uh, Daniel Hagari in an evening press conference says that despite the difficult content, the military chose to release the audio recordings to remind and not forget. Okay, let's not even bring up and focus on the fact that we also have evidence of uh just random civilians also not connected to to uh unra but just we have a, a a journalist who wrote for al jazeera that was holding three of the hostages that were rescued okay the complicity and the celebration for hamas and support for hamas that we're seeing from recent polling coming out of 
Gaza shows widespread, nearly 80% support for Hamas. So Mehdi is lying. He lies time and again. And uh, it's great to see that he's called out on this. But I just found it quite astonishing that he could so brazenly lie. Another example of him lying is in this clip where he seemingly, intentionally, uh, misquotes uh, Balfour. Arthur Balfour, who, of course, uh, created the Balfour Declaration. Um, I say intentionally because I don't really know how else to uh, understand what he's doing here. Have a watch of him quoting Balfour and then Natasha Hausdorff's response. In 1917, over 100 years ago, Arthur Balfour, the British Foreign Secretary, a card-carrying anti-Semite, a man who had denounced the evils of Jewish immigration into the UK, a man who referred to Jews as an alien and hostile people, he issued his Balfour Declaration, which promised a national home for the Jewish people in Palestine. Balfour, we heard him quoted to you earlier, ladies and gentlemen. Well, let's be clear about that quote and what uh, was changed, or at least misrepresented, because I think this is going to give a really strong indication for what is coming out of the opposition as a whole. We were told he'd referred to Jews as alien and hostile, in fact that he was therefore an anti-Semite. Well, I'm going to read you out the quote, and you make up your own minds. He said, mitigate the age-long miseries created for Western civilization by the presence in its midst of a body which it too long regarded as alien and even hostile, but which it was equally unable to expel or absorb. And of course, Balfour, who is a complicated figure, um, he was, I think, kind of really became uh, very passionate in be becoming a supporter of the cause of Zionism. Now, yes, he may well have had um, typical uh, views and prejudices uh, about Jews, which were absolutely common and mainstream at the time. But the point is here, Mehdi quoted uh, Balfour um, and basically totally misinterpreted what he was saying. Um, and so the point here is not about the question specifically of whether Balfour is or isn't, uh, you know, a complicated figure. The point is that there was an, a clear misrepresentation of his words. And so that should point to the kind of character we're dealing with, with Mehdi Hassan. I think this guy's an Islamist. I think he is. If you look at what he supports, and he's very clever, he's very effective at going after, um, you know, going, doing things in aid of the Islamist cause in a way that is seen as respectable and acceptable. But well done for Natasha and Douglas for calling him out, and we should continue to call out his lies, and worse than his lies, his sinister agenda. Hi, thank you so much for watching. To watch another one, click here. To stay up to date with all our content, click here to subscribe. And if you're able to, you can help support JTV to grow and grow by clicking join below this video, where you can become a member and get perks, including early access to videos and private live discussions with me. But most of all, you'll be partnering with us on our mission to change the world.